This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Today, I want to discuss how to use an extra time frame, one higher time frame, to really evaluate how to uh, decide whether to do a long trade or not. I'm going to use a long as this, in this example, but it could be a short trade, same concept. Uh, but what we're trying to do is evaluate whether, uh, as we come into a support level, do we look to get long at that support level or are we looking to play a breakdown? So uh, let me just go through and show you the types of things that I'm looking at to see if this can uh, be helpful for you in this situation. Uh, the example I'm using is the uh, S&P. Again, I've got the hourly chart on the right of 10 minute in the middle here and a uh, two minute on the left. And um, I'm focusing in on a uh, specific area right here where we, we made this big drop, which just happened just recently in the market, bounced off that level. And then we started, we tried to break it, but you notice how this was sort of trading around the breakdown level. And that's this key level on this hourly. See how we had a bottom here and a bottom here. Um, and so uh, th that acted as support, obviously. So we, we can't ignore that as we come into that at 410 um, on this decline here. So we know we just had a zero line reversal on the hourly and we're showing some pretty good strength to the downside. But how do we know whether this isn't just a low the bottom where we're going to reverse or whether we really want to play this for continuation to the downside? So again, what I've always said when it comes to support and resistance, I don't want to uh, just make a, a, a blanket uh, decision and say, OK, every time I hit support like this, I'm either going to get out if I'm short or, you know, buy or I'm automatically going to short the breakdown. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to evaluate. Number one, I'm going to evaluate the momentum on the trade time frame. OK, now this is the trade time frame um, because we have a strong move to the downside confirmed by MACD, confirmed by ADX. OK, we're going to look at it here and here with this decline. Okay, we're hitting new lows with price and uh, new highs with ADX based on the sellers. And then we get the retracement back to the uh, 18, which is declining below the 40. Okay, so this is the trade time frame. If we have a trigger, it's going to happen on the smaller time frame, two minute. This is the time frame that frames out the trade. I always use one extra time frame to frame out where the key levels are. Let's look at the hourly chart because we want to see where these key levels are. So, uh, you know, one of the things you can do uh, with most software packages, let me see if I can find this, is a horizontal line, horizontal line. And, you know, you can just go like that and then say, OK, we've got another level here we want to hit. Oh, I guess you got to hit it every time depending on the software. And then we know we've got really significant support right here and so i think if i'm if i'm looking at a trade on even on the 10 minute and i'm, I'm going to go up one time frame so if let's just use this as an example let's say i wanted to do a trade off the daily chart the tr daily chart is the trend time frame i want to go up on the weekly and i want to do the same exercise i want to see where are these support levels coming in where are we finding reversals or had top, tops or bottoms taking place and we want to create horizontal lines in place. Now, I prefer to have them show up on the other time frame, the trading time frame. So I know um, I just put this blue line uh, up, which is basically the same one that I had. I didn't I, I, I didn't make it as accurate uh, with the blue line. So we've got that. We know we've got another one down to 407. But what's key about this is I know that if I do this trade, if I, if I end up getting a trigger to the downside, I have an open window from 410 down to about 407 okay we want to play these windows these are the types of windows you're looking for and we can use this higher time frame so if let's say now this is starting to get pretty extended but let's say this um, trades around 
Uh, we know that is not going to happen. The market's going to open and drop here uh, coming up. Uh, so I know the futures are telling me that this is going to go down. This might be down here. Now, if we get that extended, uninterrupted run all the way down to 400, and I know that's a key support level on the bigger time frames, I'm more inclined, no matter what the momentum is. Now, see how the ADX is all the way up to 70? So if we keep going, this, this is going to be up at like 75 or something like that. That's very mature. That is not strong. So there's a difference between strong and then uh, mature, right? I want to look for trades somewhere in anywhere from uh, 25 up to say 50, maybe even 60 in some cases. In this case, especially on an interday basis, you can linger above 50 a little bit longer. But if we have strong a strong move, I'm willing to play that. Now we've exceeded that and now we're above 70. Whenever you're above 70, I think whenever you're above 50, most cases you're looking for some sign of a reversal. But in this case, it was a single leg. We hadn't had any move, like we hadn't had any other triggers in here. So I would take advantage of this in this case, just showing sheer unadulterated strength uh, to the downside, basically. Um, and the reaction at key support was not very good. So I knew I had an open window to here, right? Now the question is, you know, when we get to 400, we're going to get really extended away after a big uninter uninterrupted move. I would be more inclined to be thinking for some kind of reversal play at that point. This is too far, right? And um, we've just made such a big drop. So at 400, this actually makes sense to me uh, to be looking the other way. But it's probably just a really short-term trade. And you don't want to do this unless you have the skill to trade uh, short-term interday type patterns, uh, especially the way I'm looking at it with an hourly 10-minute and two minutes. So, um, But let's just say this is a weekly chart. I'm going down to the daily chart and I'm probably inclined to think, okay, this is a pretty, this is a bigger support zone. And I can see that on the higher time frames. Let me see if anything happens on the hourly to trigger me in for a short-term trade to the upside. So um, these are, I think, the types of things that you need to evaluate um, when you're doing this. But let's just look at a 10-minute chart because I want to show you something. If you go back and look at the 10-minute, look at, this is why I go up a time frame because if I'm creating these reversals at all, you know, at, at all the key levels here, um, I'm going to have so many of these take place uh, throughout the movement. This is a pretty key level here. We had a, a top and it was like kind of the shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern. I've got another one here. I mean, I'm going to have so many little signals. Now, if I'm trading off of a two minute or a five minute or something like that, then, you know, that then those little windows can be useful if I'm, if I'm using a five minute and a one minute. But I the reality is if I'm trading off of a 10 minute, I can't really use the 10 minute for, to create these horizontal lines, these windows, because I, I'm looking for where the key levels are on the higher time frames. So keep these types of things in mind uh, as you're going through and looking for signals and trades, especially in this environment. I, I did a show on Stock Charts TV not that long ago that was um, where the, uh, the lesson was on finding reversal signals, anticipating reversals. I would go back and look at those. And the reason why I highlighted that and why I think it's incredibly important right now uh, to be on the lookout for reversals is because we could be in an environment where the market can continue to reverse over and over again. We might not trend right now. We could end up channeling sideways between support and resistance. So you have to be able to anticipate those type of reversal patterns, but you also need to know what your windows are when you're putting a trade on. Know what the next level of support or resistance is. If I'm taking a long trade, know what the next level to the upside. If I'm playing a short trade, what's the next level of support to the downside? And you have to use one higher time frame to get there. All right, go ahead and post any questions or comments and we'll see you next time.